Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the Lanky Lazy or Lank Lazy or maybe just Lazy or something like that. Uh, it's uh, probably spelled otherwise but we are going to go over that. Uh, so the model it's the XT750 uh, plus model. And this is one kind of a bike, it's uh, rather different in design than uh, most other electric bikes because it combines several concepts such as uh, full suspension with front and rear suspension. Uh, it's also 26 uh, inch wheels equipped, so large wheels, normal wheels. It's not a 29er, but it's using fat tires, so actually the wheels are almost 29 inch uh, and it's also foldable, so it's kind of a compact bike, but it's a normal bike uh, and it's electric and could do some uh, off-roading, so it's a all-in-one bike and today we are going to see if it does something from all of that or it does at least something or it's not good at nothing from all of that. I'm going to start first with some uh, technical details, so the most important, the motor, uh, 500 watts rated, it's a geared motor with reduction, planetary reduction gears inside, which means that it has uh, a lot of torque and it also has some other advantages. And one of the advantages is that it can uh, uh, free coast like this. So it can spin forever and forever, just like a normal bike wheel and the motor will not put any kind of drag or resistance because it has a one-way clutch inside and that one clutch inside engages only when the motor tries to spin the wheel and when there is no power the clutch disengages and the wheel is just going to be free and will not have any kind of magnetic hogging from the motor. This makes the bike very efficient, uh, consumes uh, less power and you can actually run this bike almost like a regular mountain bike of course with the added extra weight of the motor, the battery, the controller and so on. Then the second most important thing, the battery, uh, which is in the frame. Uh, it's a 48 volt battery with 12.8 amp hours capacity. The battery is fully removable. Uh, when you fold the bike, you can take the battery out and recharge it separately. And to do uh, even better than that, the battery also has a locking system. So if you leave the bike unattended, you have here a key locking and with that key locking you lock the battery in the frame and even if you unfold the frame you cannot take the battery out which is really good the drive system is comprised of a 3 and a 9 system uh, and you have Shimano uh, Altus M2000 the pedal shifters here and they are indexed and a rear Altus Shimano derailleur while the front derailleur is a uh, Saic 1 something 42T so it's not a brand uh, nonetheless Shimano indeed is a good brand but Altus it's kind of their entry level although they work brilliantly on these bikes so cannot actually complain about them to make all of this uh, motor battery and uh, things going we get this S700 uh, controller uh, display actually the controller is inside the bike uh, but this is uh, really ingenious uh, it has a lot of settings uh, a lot of settings and you can customize different things uh, you have uh, default 5 assist modes uh, then you have non assisted mode and you have throttle mode and you also have walk assist mode which actually uh, makes the bike go very slow so uh, it helps you when you walk beside the bike 
And besides regular functions such as odometer, timer, uh, error messages, uh, trip meter, and uh, things like that, and battery level, uh, you can uh, very easily enter in the advanced settings menu. And here you have nonetheless uh, 70 customizable functions that can actually 18 function, 18 function that you can customize a lot of uh, things here, such as the motor start strength, uh, but those are needed to be tested, we'll see about that. Uh, you can set more uh, assisted levels, uh, you can uh, take the limit of the motor off. The bike comes limited at 25 kilometers per hour, but it's very simple to enter the settings and remove the limit, and the unlimited speed goes up to 40 kilometers per hour. To stop all that speed, uh, you get uh, fully hydraulic zoom brakes. They are not cable brakes, they are fully hydraulic with mineral oil and they also have inhibitor wires with sensors built in, so it disengages the motors uh, as soon as you press the brake. Both uh, disc brakes, uh, front and uh, rear, are 160 millimeters XTEC. These brakes with, of course, uh, XTEC uh, fully hydraulic calipers that have uh, two pistons, one on each side, so they uh, squeeze the brake pads uh, evenly on the disc without bending it to one side, such as the simple mechanical brakes that you get on other bikes. The quality of the bike and the materials is very good uh, and it's surprisingly light for its size. Uh, the frame is made from uh, aircraft grade aluminium uh, and it makes it both strong and light. Uh, folding mechanism is very solid and the frame is very solid also. You have several reinforcements in uh, key places to keep all the frame and the tension from the seat post and other stuff evenly distributed around the frame so makes it uh, very strong. And it's also very well thought and designed. For instance you get this free a screw here and this one here. Uh, these are for actually putting a rear rack on your bike because this is a full suspension and this rear arm moves around. Uh, you cannot fit a uh, rear rack that sits fixed here and uh, there on the wheel nut because it will block the suspension and it will not be able to flex. So they integrated these two and you can find special racks that have their own uh, fixing legs that will sit above that and of course they also added this mudguard uh, that has uh, another added fixing point here and you also have a fixing point there so if you want uh, big uh, uh, mud protectors uh, fenders or call them uh, how you wish you can actually install a big arching one and then uh, you can fix it from here with uh, wires around the rear wheel, so you are going to be fully protected in uh, bad weather. The rear suspension is also interesting, uh, as it has that arm there with this part here, like acts like a lever. Uh, this is actually CNC cut, and it's very solid, and it uses uh, the same part on the other side as well. And you have a regular compression spring here, is the almost famous uh, hot HLT100, famous because uh, they used to uh, build this and say that it's an air shock uh, to increase its price and they have put here an air valve and you, that was fake, they didn't have air inside, it's a regular spring and it's not the best quality. You can also see this one, it's kind of a bit bent, although it works perfectly uh, I will change this with a better one because the front suspension is much better than this. And although it's a no-name front fork, uh, I say its uh, age is better than that shock because this is an uh, actual oil shock uh, with a lockout option and preload settings so you can adjust uh, how the suspension will work and when you don't need the suspension you can lock it out um, for good roads and more efficient pedaling. The tires are also interesting although uh, not as famous as uh, CST or rear brands they are Shao Yang, Cho Yang, Shang Yong, whatever. Uh, I have only put 
15 psi into them and they are already rock solid so you can actually take some pressure out and they work extremely well they give you very good traction and absorb a lot of the bumps so you can actually run a regular fat bike with no suspension and it will be very comfortable imagine the combination of soft tires with full suspension it's a dream when you ride this it's like a riding on a cushion of air the locking mechanism is uh, similar with the one found on uh, Fido bikes with uh, twist it doesn't have that pin that locks the clamp it actually has a spring loaded locker which you pull and then you release the clamp and now the bike is able to fold to make the bike uh, even more easy to transport and to carry around you have uh, quick skewers on the front wheel so quick release skewers uh, you just uh, uh, take this off and then uh, it's like the seat post it's already released you just lift the bike up the wheel comes off and this makes it very easy to store the bike or to transport it with uh, your car so folded with the front wheel taken off takes a lot less space than a regular folding bike with uh, the wheel not removed and it's now time to ride it and let's see how uh, this goes so I'm going to power it on a uh, very good thing about the display is that it always starts in assisted mode 1 uh, I don't know if you can change that with default working mode probably but I like it that way because if you uh, start it, it, it will start in a no assistant mode you are actually going to have throttle active which can result in uh, an accident if you are not paying attention so I like the fact that it starts in assistant uh, level 1 so that's how we are going to ride it so let's see how this goes and from the start I can say that I like a thing very much about this bike it's how the uh, assistance work. Uh, it picks up my pedaling in less than one turn. I think it's actually, I'm going to try that again. I think it's actually half turn of a pedal. So that's really good because that's why it's assistance. It doesn't have a delay, so it doesn't, don't have to put a lot of effort to pedal. Uh, to start the bike you just pedal a bit and it starts to work so that's really nice and then it also stops as soon as you stop pedaling so there is no delay uh, that was a thing that i hated the most on my fidu e-bikes uh, they have a terrible delay so you need to pedal really hard for a bit of time until the system wakes up and starts to assist you and then uh, it also uh, works for something like two seconds when you are not pedaling anymore so you want to uh, stop then the motor still works it doesn't happen like that here motor picks up almost instantly and then shuts off instantly when you stop pedaling so that works really nice so let's see now i'm on uh, level one assistant and i can feel that my pedaling is now in effort at around 18 kilometers per hour second level I need to change gears already so that's around 20 something kilometers per hour with the second level let's see third level that's something like 30 kilometers per hour wow and this thing goes uphill really nice really nice the motor has a lot of torque and I wonder what is level 4 I need to change this gear also right and let's see now and that was going over 30 kilometers per hour 
and was still assisted. So plenty of speed there. I need to change the gears again. Let's try that. And that was 37 kilometers per hour with not much effort really nice and the fifth level and the last level here it's unlimited speed for a city mode so you get all the speed possible by the motor and the battery on fifth level and the acceleration is not working of course because i'm in assisted mode and that's also a nice thing to have because when it's assisted it's assisted and if i go down to zero zero here now i have throttle acceleration That was 40 and a few. Suspension works really nice, really nice with all that suspension and flat wheels. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. With all that speed you also need good brakes and the brakes work really nice although I need to caution you and this is very important if you get this bike uh, on the first about 10 kilometers per hour the brake didn't hold at, at all and even if you squeeze the brake lever as hard as possible and you can feel it blocking it would not stop the bike um, because the brake pads are new and the disc is new and they are uh, somehow shiny but not oily they are not yet uh, bedded in so you need to uh, be caution with the brake at the beginning and now i have 90 kilometers just 90 kilometers but uh, the brake is starting to hold very well and you can uh, actually lock the wheels now but uh, you need to take caution with that because when you get the bike the first thing that you are going to see is uh, how fast it goes and you are going to find yourself not not uh, being able to stop and that's very dangerous so take care with that and another thing that i like and you can see i'm not pedaling i'm not doing anything and this is just simply going it's not even a big downhill here it's almost flat but i had some momentum from there and the bike keeps on going and going and going and going it doesn't put any kind of resistance and now i'm with no assist mode and if i put some momentum on it will go again and again and again and again there is no drag there is nothing holding you back the motor is not putting any uh, resistance so this actually saves energy and power makes it more efficient and pleasant to ride but that's enough with the talk because this is a fat bike and fat bikes are meant to do this and this is like using my figu on asphalt so it's very controllable by the way the grass is very wet because it uh, has rained a lot in the last few days and even today there were some uh, short sh showers but i have a normal traction and control there's no slippage there's no problem and i can now go over all kind of bumps without any kind of issues just like that and it feels great to do that and i can do that
again. And the motor pulls just like a train, like a locomotive. It simply has great torque, but there is also something else different. It has a kind of a smart acceleration, so it doesn't put all that torque instantly to knock you over or to lose control or to uh, start drifting with your bike. It actually puts it in a more tempered way and it makes this a lot more controllable and pleasant to ride. And it's not jerking the acceleration, but there's no lag also. It's just kind of linear, progressive in a good way. And it feels very good and makes you uh, feel very comfortable and safe when you ride it because you know the bike will not do something stupid and you may end up crashing with it. future. time for some fun and let's see how this thing goes on a very steep hill which is also covered in mud okay so the motor almost had power until up to the end but I had to release the throttle a bit because it was starting to slip dangerously to one side but uh, that went well, put some pedal into it and it went uphill very good uh, on the camera it might actually not show the true angle because uh, it's the fisheye deformation, the wide angle so it looks like something but it's not something, it's really steep So let's pick up another track and there's a kerb and there's no problem and just like that the kerb was jumped away so let's get into traffic now
time now. It's time for traffic again. But now it's going to be uphill on a very long stretch of uphill road. I'm now in only full electric mode. It's doing 35 kilometers per hour. As you can see it's raining and it's terribly unpleasant but it's pleasant with this bike so 30 kilometers per hour no pedaling lot of power to go uphill and you can see the battery level is now uh, 50 percent but when I release the throttle it's something like 80 percent and I'm going to explain you later what is happening with the battery and why it's doing that thing. So sadly the test is going to be over because it's raining a bit too much for my taste. So I'm uh, actually soaking wet. The bike is also soaking wet. But at least now we know that this bike is uh, really waterproof because uh, it stood in the rain uh, for some time and did uh, 40 kilometers per hour splashing water around. So no problems. No not with the motor, no problem with the controller, no problem with the throttle, display, display full of water, but uh, still works uh, fine. So basically we went through most of the bike features. Uh, there are much more to talk about, but I'm thinking of making a second part uh, in some time from now. But uh, it's going to be a wrap for today and we are going to go quickly to the pros and cons now so i'm going to start with the pros uh, tires are great a very good traction uh, and you can under inflate the tires and it will make them uh, really comfortable suspension works really nice even the rear one with the ori original shock which is not very good quality it works very good front suspension is brilliant uh, lockout works uh, really nice you just click this and it's now locked and no more suspension and now it's released and preload also works really nice it can adjust to your weight so uh, the bike will not lean uh, too much forward when you uh, touch the brakes or when to uh, pick pumps with it so that's really nice motor is very good has a lot of power a lot of torque it's not very noisy even though it's geared it's very efficient, I love that. Pedals are also very good, they are uh, uh, made from metal, they are not plastic pedals, although they do not fold, but they are comfortable because they are big, they are wide, and your uh, 
uh, shoe will stay very good and it has these tiny metal grips on it. The gear set works really nice, it changes very good uh, and even though it has 3 times 9 gears and you might say that it's too much because most bikes only have one gear here and the rest there, it's actually very good as when you uh, unlimit the motor and you go full 40 km per hour, it's actually very useful to use the highest gear here and lowest gear there and it's just perfectly geared so you can actually assist the motor and even push it a bit further than 40 km per hour if you really wish to or if you want to put in some effort you can do that even at 40 km per hour so you have a lot of range in the gears to play with and that's excellent front uh, headlight is also very good it has a lot of power it has two bright leds it even has a speaker underneath that should be the horn but uh, because it uses this s uh, 700 display and these buttons here there actually there isn't any uh, horn button and the light is controlled from the display here by holding the button press the up button it turns on or off the light there but uh, you do not have a horn option also you do not have an electric um, rear lamp although in the accessories box you have seen the included one which you can attach to the seat post or somewhere near the wheel it's your choice so that was it for now i hope that uh, you have enjoyed this uh, video be sure to follow my next uploads and until then you can leave me a comment uh, and ask me what you would wish to see in the second part of the video and I'm going to try to do a second review and that will be also good because I will put some miles onto the bike and I will have a better impression because now it's brand new but uh, after some usage I can tell you well the fork is not good or the suspension is not good or something broke and also a small notion if you have here something in the videos something like a very annoying rattle metallic noise well that comes from the kickstand because when this is put up and you go over bumps, it does this and makes a terrible noise of course if you do not need it, you can remove it it's a solid kickstand, very good, holds the bike really well but if you are not going to use it very much, you can take it off and you are going to get rid of that annoying rattle so until my next video, see you and bye bye